The problem with many Christians today, it is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness is the problem. Most of your problems are tied on prayerlessness. We are not praying. We are not talking to God. We are not communicating with God. How do we expect to know God if we don't talk with him? Imagine a husband and wife does not talk and expect to know each other. Imagine brothers and sisters don't talk and expect to know each other. Imagine at work, at school, no communication. The Bible said, how can two walk together and agree unless they agree? How can two walk together unless they agree? The problem is prayerlessness. You have to understand. Prayer gives God jurisdiction to act in your life. With that prayer, you are dead, Christian. You are dry, like the desert. God is taking out of me today to give you the praying spirit. The grace to pray, to talk to God. People say, I don't know what to say. Just call the name Jesus Christ. Just call his name. Call his name. Just start to start thanking him. Prayer start with thanksgiving. Just thank God. Just thank him. Thank you for so many things you have done in your life. And then you have to start praying. Praying for people, praying for nations, praying for yourself to grow, praying for hunger, praying for thirst, to know him more, pray for his presence, his power, pray for his anointing, pray for the fruit of the spirit, pray for joy, pray for the character of God, pray for the mind of Christ. The devil knows that you are not praying. So they can do whatever they got to do. When you pray, you have authority, you have power in your spirit, in your heart. A child of God has power, has light, has fire, but you need to ask. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, ask, seek, and knock for those who ask, receive. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, the doors open to them. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who hears my voice and open the door, I will come and dine with him. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 12, be patient in affliction. Be joyful and pray always. The Bible says in the book of Luke 12, 12, the Holy Spirit will help you. Will teach you what to say. Bible says also in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Be joyful always and pray without ceasing. And be thankful that is the will of God in Christ for you. The Bible says in the book of 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, If my people who are called by my name, who humble the heart, seek my first and pray and turn from their wicked ways, God will hear from heaven and heal your land. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 6, verse 4, that we should give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The Bible says God's ears are closer to the prayer of the righteous. The Bible says in the book of Psalm that when I cry out to God, my enemies will flee. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1, men should always pray with that season. The Bible says that in the book of Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21, that do not store yourself treasures. Don't lay yourself treasures on earth where moths and rust can destroy or thieves can break in and steal. But rather lay yourself, store yourself treasures in heaven where thieves cannot break in and steal, where moths and rust cannot destroy. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. The Bible says, out of the step, belly will come springs of living water. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. The Bible keeps speaking about prayer. You see, I study and meditate in the word of God. When you study and meditate in the word of God, your prayer life is strong. You wonder why you can talk with people, but you cannot have time to talk with God. You wonder why you can eat and eat physical food, but you cannot eat your spiritual food. You wonder why you're not talking to God, why you feel weak when you pray. Because you are not seeking God. The Bible said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for them will feel. I speak with so much power and anointing, with so much grace and passion, because I love people. I want people to know Jesus Christ, to seek him. God will hear your prayer. Don't let no one lie to you. You have the faith. You have the hope of glory in you. You have Jesus in you. You have the Holy Spirit. You just have to speak to him. Talk to him. Have a conversation to him. You will hear him speak to your heart, to your mind. He will speak to any form of of, of, of vessel that he chooses to. You just have to be clean. You just have to be ready. You just have to seek his presence. The problem you have is prayerlessness. You are not talking to God, but you are talking to everyone else. I come to preach in the wilderness to tell people, seek God. 
Then all your crooked places straight, all your rough places smooth. Seek God, ask God, what am I supposed to do? What is there for me in life? Call upon his presence, call upon his anointing, call upon his love, his joy, his peace. Be filled with the fruit of the spirit. Be filled with Christ, be filled with his mind, with his thought. Too much of you is too much problem. Too much of your flesh is too much problem. The Bible says, Matthew 26, verse 41, Watch and pray that you will fall not into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Your flesh goes to the ground and that your spirit man needs life in his light in his fire in his joy peace i am preaching to you and speaking to you from the heart that you must seek god you must ask him your purpose in life you must know him maybe god has delayed to heal you to deliver you to save you whatever it is don't give up the parable of the widow luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8 she never gave up god said never give up some of you give up too quick you say, God has not ab abandoned me. God has given up. God has not answered me. It's a lie. That's a lie of the devil. It's a trick. It's a scheme. Satan wants you not to pray because we know that when you pray, God hears you from heaven. My brothers, seek God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul so that there's no room for the flesh, no room for the devil, no room for, for anything. There's no time left. Shalom. Thank you.